Back to Sunday Night in America. Let's go back to January of last year. Democrats had a nine-point lead on Republicans in voter identification polls. 49% of Americans aligned with the Democrat Party, whereas only 40% identified with Republicans. January of 2021 was bleak. There was an attack on the Capitol. Republicans lost two Senate seats in Georgia. Former President Trump was impeached for a second time. What a difference a year makes. Now the tables have turned. 47% of Americans now identify with the Republican Party and only 42% with the Democrats. Democrats dropped seven points. Republicans went up seven points. The question is why? Why did this happen? Is it simply the failures of the Biden administration? Did Democrats overread the election results? Are Republicans offering something affirmative or just getting out of the way and letting Democrats fight each other? What explains this nearly 10 point shift in less than a year? I mean, part of it for sure is the failure of the Biden administration the feckless withdrawal from Afghanistan, the fact that Russia and China are more emboldened than ever, the mismanagement of COVID and supply chain issues, the border is a willful disaster. We were told Biden was a foreign policy expert, but there is absolutely no evidence of that. Biden promised to manage the pandemic, but he has not. Economic uncertainty at home and real doubt on the world stage, this helps explain the shift and how Americans identify themselves, but something else is going on in this country. There's an existential angst about who we are as a people, as a country, what we should legitimately expect from one another and from government. Biden said he was a unifier, and then he went to a southern state when he actually won to compare half the country to George Wallace and Bull Connor. Americans are smarter than that. Americans actually remember Joe Biden himself eulogized a man who ran for president as a segregationist. Joe Biden worked with and had very nice things to say about other segregationists. Biden will tell you that these men changed. Well, if men and women can change, can a state or a nation change too? And when that state or nation does change, why not acknowledge that? Why not celebrate that? Some Democrats think people should be able to vote without an ID or have political parties pass out items of value to voters standing in line. Some Democrats even think prisoners and non-citizens should vote. The rest of us do not. That makes us different, but it doesn't make us motivated by racial animus. Part of what's going on in this country is a renewed debate over the scope and the role of government. Democrats want a larger role for the federal government in areas like school curriculum and health decisions for children and childcare and federalizing elections. And Americans are wondering why government should be making decisions for our children if government can't even drone the right car in Afghanistan or produce enough COVID tests or solve the supply chain, Americans don't want government dividing school children into racist and victims or a president dividing the country over race. We don't want teachers unions lecturing us about what's best for children when they can't even bother to show up for school. We don't want government telling us how we should be softer on crime or let career offenders out on bond because Americans are smart enough to know that sometimes those career offenders drive through Christmas parades or murder innocent young women in California furniture stores. We want government to do those things government is supposed to do, things like national security and border security and public safety. So yes, 2021 was bad for the Democrats and by default, good for the Republicans. If Republicans want to turn a good year into a good decade, then make the case for a limited government that is competent, one that excels at core functions like national security and public safety and the border and the supply chain. If you can prove your limited federal government can perform competently, and inspire a new public confidence, people may trust you to lead the country, 
and not merely lead the opposition. Joining us now, townhall.com editor and Fox News contributor, Katie Pavlich. It is so nice to have you join us. Katie, you follow this stuff Great so well, you. so carefully. How, what do you make of this shift in voter identification? Well, I think we'd take, we could take the whole show to talk about all of the topics that are driving the Democrats down the drain when it comes to voter approval among independents in particular. 67 percent of independents now don't approve of Joe Biden's handling of every single issue, whether it's COVID, the economy, uh, crime, for example. And this White House has had this strategy throughout the year of when there's a problem happening, whether it's the supply chain crisis, whether it's the testing crisis or the inflation problem that we're having in the country, which is worse than it's been since 1982, they say that it's not happening or they blame it on something else. For example, Ron Klain, who was the White House chief of staff, said that inflation was a high class problem. Well, when you know everyday people are seeing prices going up by 8 percent on everyday items at the grocery store, that's not a high class problem. That's a middle class problem. And Joe Biden was the guy who promised not to raise taxes on any Americans making less than $400,000 a year. Well, inflation is a tax on everyone. Everybody. Crime affects everybody. If you have kids or you're a woman who wants to just go to work, as you acknowledged earlier in the show, and you're not sure if someone's going to walk in the door and, and assault you or kill you, uh, those are issues that every single person thinks about. And when you have a White House saying, and the federal government and Democrats ignoring the issue, not putting the Department of Justice uh, into a specific operation to combat crime in these liberal cities, not calling up these DAs in L.A. and New York and saying, hey, uh, we have a crime problem, but we also have a political problem problem here. Uh, you need to solve this, pro this, this crisis. Uh, people tend to think differently about how they're going to vote. Katie, you are so right. The president likes to blame Republicans. I'm going to play a clip of him doing just that and get you to react to it on the other side. And everything's changing. It's getting better. Look, um, I didn't overpromise, but I think if you take a look at what we've been able to do, uh, you'd have to acknowledge we made enormous progress. But one of the things that I think is something that, uh, one thing I haven't been able to do so far, is get my Republican friends to get in the game of making things better in this country. It's all the Republicans' fault. Why won't they, why won't they go along with closing prisons and all the other crazy ideas that have been put forward? I, I thought that was pretty sad. What was your reaction to that excuse? Well, again, Joe Biden is rejecting math in Washington, D.C. Uh, Democrats have a majority in the House and the Senate. Uh, if Joe Biden wanted to get things passed just with Democrats, he could do that in a lot of ways. But he is unable to do that because he is unwilling to step away from being a proxy for Bernie Sanders and the left. And when Joe Biden took office in January of last year, uh, there were warnings from a number of people, including moderate Democrats, that he was too weak to stand up to the left, not just on economic issues, but on social issues as well. And you've seen that continue to play out. And Joe Biden promised on the campaign trail that he's a moderate. The media helped him in that way, said that he was going to get uh, you know, America and the country and Washington, D.C. back to normal. And he has done the exact opposite. He took a big risk by trying to become the next FDR with this big le legacy of massive government spending at a time when he only had a 50-50 split in the Senate. And he took that bet and he lost. And now he's blaming Republicans when it's Democrats like Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia, Kirsten Sinema of Arizona, who are the ones who have put the brakes on destroying and blowing up norms like eliminating the filibuster in the Senate, all for the sake of pushing through a very far left wing agenda on the issue of federalizing elections, which the vast majority, 70 percent of Americans, don't agree with. And so, um, you know, he is blaming Republicans because there's nowhere else to go. And it's the truth is that he has not been able to unite his own party, not to mention try and get Republicans on board with an agenda that is not moderate at all. It's a very far left agenda that is being pushed by uh, the left in the Senate and in the House. Katie, I'm going to have you on, and I will tell you ahead of time what I'm going to ask you when I have you on next, whether or not November will be a referendum on the size and scope of government or the competence of government. I know you don't need to know ahead of time what the question's going to be, but I'm going to tell you <laughs> ahead of time. I can't wait to have you back I'll on. Thank you, for, thank you for joining <laughs> us tonight. 
Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.